Welcome to Solve It Like a Marketer. I'm Stephen Hobe. Today, we're going to be exploring using strategic thinking to achieve a competitive advantage. As always, if you like this video, please subscribe, hit that bell so that you get notified every week, and well, don't go away. Now, for those of you that have been watching this channel for a while, you will know that the strategist, Japanese strategist, Kenichi Omae is one of my favorites. Um, I think I've covered in a couple of videos uh, his three C's model. So please look those up. Uh, it's kind of one of the foundations um, of marketing, uh, his three C's model. But today we're going to look at something a little different. Now, he wrote a book called The Mind of the Strategist where he really delves into the art of strategy. Now, I'm going to say that you might say it's actually a bit of an entertaining read, and it's certainly very philosophical and sometimes actually bordering on poetic. So it's actually a good one to pick up. And I wanted to sort of start before I delve into um, the theory that he's expounding upon it in the book, a quote from the book, just to give you kind of the gist of it. So he says, what marks the mind of the strategist is an intellectual elasticity or flexibility that enables him to come up with realistic, realistic responses to changing situations, not simply to discriminate with great precision among different shades of gray. Pretty poetic, right? He goes on to say, the purpose of strategy is to maximize one's advantage. Here we go. On a battlefield, this means picking the right place to fight, the right time to attack, and the right time to retreat, weighing and reassessing as circumstances change. But always with gaining maximum advantage in mind. Strategy is intuitive, but it's also analytical. It's analytical, but also intuitive. Mind-bending, right? Finally, just to finish up, he goes on and says that analysis is a cognitive process of breaking a complex topic into smaller parts to gain a better understanding of it. Analyzing means separating a situation into parts and examining the parts in an attempt to understand what's occurring. In business situations, analysis involves identifying business needs related to a situation, identifying critical issues and determining possible solutions. And you know what? If we sort of brush away all the philosophical components to this and the poeticisms, he actually has a point. You know, in business, uh, we talk a lot about strategy. We look at all of these different frameworks and really at the crux of these different frameworks is to tackle a problem, a fundamental marketing problem to sort of clear away the clutter or the complexities of that problem and then get it down to um, what he calls actually the critical issue. Identifying the critical issue. What is the core problem that we're trying to address and solve? And that's what he says analysis is is clearing away the complexities and really delving deep into a specific problem. Almost, and, and business, almost looking at it like a chess game because he's always thinking of it in terms of competitive advantage, right? So you versus your competitors on a chessboard.
Now, what he goes on to say is that the, the name of the game, so to speak, is to gain advantage over competition at a reasonable cost. And I think this is key, right? You don't want to overspend just because you want to gain a competitive advantage. Now, he says this can be done in four different ways. The first one is to reallocate resources. Second, focus on exploiting you, your relative strength. He says one's relative strength. Three, redefine the key issue of the business by taking a bold action. And number four, exploit any degrees of freedom to act. Okay, some of these may not make a lot of sense, so let's go through them. So as I mentioned, first one was reallocate resources. So he says every industry has one or two factors that determine their business success. So no matter how complicated the industry may seem, really at its core, it's actually quite simple. So if we take the example of banking, for instance, it's about collecting money at a low cost and lending it at a higher return. Sure, the banking industry is very complicated. Banking is very complicated. But at its core, this is, this is what it means. And this is how banks make money from their customers. So the critical factors that he talks about in an industry can be identified in a few different ways. One is to analyze the industry, looking at each segment. Again, important, defining how competitors in each area behave and drawing some sort of overall conclusions about their success. So how are they being successful in their particular segment? Once you've identified this, what he calls key factor for success, and he short forms that to KFS, in your industry, you redeploy your resources to focus on building strength in that key factor. So basically aligning it with theirs. So if it's in service, for instance, focus your resources on developing outstanding service for your customer base. If it's, say, product design, then focus on that. Okay. Next, he mentions exploit relative strength. Okay, so what does that mean? So basically examine your product and identify areas where you can focus on achieving a relative advantage. We talk about relative advantage a lot. And this means that literally taking your product apart, taking your competitor's product apart and comparing the two right? So for example, there's a very good example. If we take the Japanese companies uh, Fuji and Sakura, uh, they compete in the photographic film industry. So basically Sakura looked at the fact that Fuji kind of has a bit of an advantage in its name because its name reflects Fuji film, the actual film that it sells. So it has an advantage in that area. So it thought, okay, well, let's leave that one alone. But what they found is that on analysis, consumers were becoming more concerned about cost and often tried to squeeze out extra cost of two, um, onto a roll of 20 exposure films. So they were trying to get two more uh, pictures out of that uh, film, or 20. So Sakura, very, very smart, decided to introduce 24 exposure film at the same price as Fuji's 20 exposure film. So again, they gained a competitive advantage. Um, 
and we're able to develop relative strength based upon cost and value. Very smart. Okay, next one, take a bold action. What does he mean that, by that? Well, simply put, he says, this is about asking why. And I love this. I think that as business people or as marketers, we should always be asking why, right? So why, why do we choose this color for a logo? Why did we choose that font, for instance? Why are we choosing these um, social media platforms or, and not others? Okay, so always asking why. But um, what he says is one of the best practitioners of this method is Taichi Ono of Toyota. Now, he asked why car companies had to keep costly finance inventory on hand, okay, and wound up inventing, he basically wound up inventing just-in-time material management practices, just-in-time. This was actually huge um, in that particular industry. So keep asking why. Finally, exploit any degrees of freedom to act. So having identified the key factors for success, precisely identify what courses of action may be open. So in the case of, again, let's go back to the auto company, perhaps safety is key. Maybe safety is also what's really on the minds of customers. So an automaker can do many different things to improve safety, but the problem is they can't do all of them at once. It would just cost too much. So meanwhile, there are some things that might improve safety, but that the company can actually simply do. So don't try and take on everything. So strategic planning and strategic action should proceed in areas where the company is actually free. It, it has freedom to move around uh, and think more strategically on the, along those lines. Now, as I said off the top, maybe pick up the book, give it a read. I think you can get it on Amazon or at your local bookstore, but it's really very interesting. Again, you know, thinking about the art of strategy, the art of business negotiation, but also trying to think how to clearly define your business and a strategy that's going to work for you. I should also mention that, again, you know, this book is taken more in the context of products, so of companies that make a product. But a lot of these st strategies and strategic thinking also applies to nonprofits as well. If you're a nonprofit and you're trying to raise money uh, for a donation drive, or you need to raise membership, you need more members, again, you have competitors out there. Whether those competitors are direct or indirect. So you need to still apply strategic thinking in order to be successful. So I encourage you to take a look at that. And again, go back to some of my videos on the three C's model and uh, let me know what you think. As always, if you like these videos, please share them so that other people can also experience them. And you know what? There's a link in my bio to buy me a coffee. I would Always appreciate that for those long evenings recording, writing, researching these episodes. You can also catch me on Instagram, Facebook for extra content. You never miss an episode. As well, I'm on LinkedIn and all of those links are below. As always, please leave me a comment uh, if you've got a question for me or if there's a, a particular topic you want me to do a video on then let me know. Uh, I will see you with a new video each week. Yes, each week. I think it's now on Wednesdays at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time that new videos come out. And as usual, yes, let's together solve it 
like a marketer.